Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, our guest today is Megan Fettis. Megan is the author of The Joy Approach, and you can find out more about Megan Fettis and her work at MeganFettis.com. Welcome, Megan Fettis. Hey, Catherine. Thanks so much for having me on. Now, Megan Fettis, you've written a book called The Joy Approach. What, in your opinion, is joy? To me, joy is the ability to experience both the happy emotions, I'll call them, and the more undesirable emotions. It's our ability to know that we have the strength to experience everything in life and allow ourselves that space to do so. Okay, so that's a that's a really wonderful definition. Um, I, I'm a I'm a great fan of the work of Dr. David Hawkins, author of Power versus Force. Dr. David Hawkins was an enlightened person. He wrote many books. He's now deceased, and he talked about joy as being a level of consciousness, and it's really the okay. vibration. And um, so. <laughs> If, if, according to Dr. Hawkins' scale of consciousness, um, everyone and everything that's alive has a level of a frequency between zero to 1,000. So 1,000 would be Jesus or Buddha. Um, everything below 200 is destructive to life. 310 is willingness. 400 is reason. 500 is joy. And when we get up into the higher levels of the 500s and up to 600, which is enlightenment, we start to experience joy. So how would you explain joy as a frequency? I love that you brought that up, Catherine, because I talk to it as the joy vibration very much. And When we get into that frequency, a lot of what it comes down to is allowing ourselves, again, being able to not resist what we deem as the the negative emotions, but allowing ourselves to see those emotions as being a part of our growth and our evolution. And the more that we can accept that part of ourselves, then we can allow ourselves to actually come into that space of enlightenment, that space where we can experience more joy Because there's not the resistance towards not experiencing anything else in our lives. Okay. Now, what here? We're here on the Natural Healing Show, and what is your experience and about what's the connection between joy and natural healing? Well, when we start to experience joy, one of the biggest things that starts to happen is we begin to create more energetic flow within our body. So one of the energies that I specifically utilize is the chakra system. And so when we have those seven major energy centers, I'll speak to those seven main ones for now. When we have any kind of resistance or any kind of blocks, usually it's pertained to an emotion or an experience or something, belief system that we're holding on to that we're either afraid to experience or we don't know how to let go of. Sometimes we don't even know that it's there, right? And so when we can actually begin to tap into that and give ourselves permission to experience it and really feel it to release it, then we can create more of that opportunity to tap into the joy. And I'm going to backtrack just a moment here because something I want to speak about is is the, um, the law of the vacuum really quickly. So once we release something, when we then create the intention of filling that space with something else, because the universal law is that there's no hole that will be left unfilled with the universe, with the energy. And we want to set an intention around what is going to fill that space. 
once we release that block. So if we can have a mindfulness around what brings us joy, what allows us to feel more lit up, what excites us, what makes us feel purposeful, then we can fill that space after we release a block with the energy of joy and help to bring us up to that higher frequency. Now, you know, my experience of joy and natural healing, all disease, all illness is slowed down vibration. And that's one of the things that we talk about here on the natural healing show. So we've all experienced this. If you had a cold, if you have a cold, you just feel like your life grinds to a halt. You've been in a hospital or a nursing home. It's definitely slowed down vibration versus joy. When we go into joy, it's high frequency energy. And simply by putting yourself in the frequency of, of, of a high vibration frequency, whether it's a room full of orchids or a beautiful garden or a beautiful sunny day, you can begin to shift your energy and lift your vibration. And sometimes I talk with my clients about, you know, when we're in the process of healing, we can work at the problem level. So you can take your supplements and you can do your emotional work. And all that is very, very helpful. But on the other hand, a, another approach is to simply find out what's going to shift your frequency and what's going to lift your vibration. Now, Megan Fedez, you have developed your own approach called the joy approach. What is the joy approach? It's a lot of that. It's really allowing, our, like, and teaching people how they can tap into that joy vibration in their life with simplicity and ease. Because sometimes what I've noticed in my own clients is they are going through the day-to-day -day life and they actually forget what brings them joy. And so they get focused on that problem area, like finding the problem, uprooting the problem, getting so focused on there. And you're so right, Catherine, in the fact that sometimes we need to bring a lightness to everything. We need to tap into memories that brought us joy, start doing activities that bring us joy, that light us up right from the get-go. And so the joy approach is teaching individuals, A, how to remember what brings them joy, and B, how to start implementing joy in a very simplistic way so that they can begin to shift their vibration. That's a wonderful way of explaining it. And in my work, one of the things that I, as a medical intuitive healer, one of the things that I sort of determine is a person's cantillation. Now, what is your cantillation? Cantillation is any activity that you can do that's foolproof for you to lift your vibration. So when I've done this over the years, for example, for one person, it could be sitting in their hot tub. For another person, it could be having sex. For another person, it could be writing poetry. For another person, it could be walking your dog. So when you find that thing that you can do on a regular basis that's going to lift your vibration, you can use that tool in your everyday life and it's going to have a profound effect on your overall well-being. Now, how does the joy approach, how does your methodology, methodology Megan Feta, support healing? Well, a lot of like what we've been talking about, Catherine, in terms of when we go through life, something that I've noticed is we all have this moment in life where we decide we need to grow up. And it's this time where we decide life needs to be serious or maybe the, the responsibilities of day-to-day -day life feel, begin to feel overwhelming because we've forgotten what it's like to tap into ourselves, what it's like to tap into what it is that we really want. And so because of that, because we disconnect from our true self, I like to call it, and we just kind of go into our projected self, then we start to feel things like stress, which then manifests in our bodies in different ways. Um, it can manifest in bringing up old emotions that perhaps we've had challenges with, or perhaps different memories or ideas or belief systems. So this approach is all about teaching people how to find that vibration in their life 
how to tap back into their true self, their true essence, which is really the vibration of joy, that lightness. You know, in preparing for our interview today, right before our interview, I was washing the windows of my house, okay? And I knew that I was going <laughs> to interview Megan Fettis about joy. And I was washing the windows of my house, and I was also washing my steps, the main steps in my house. And I think so often we think that joy or happiness has to happen on like Saturday night or you have to have something outside yourself, right? But for me, I'm just washing my windows down on my hands and knees, scrubbing the floor, and I'm extremely joyful. So what I notice is that joy is actually an internal state that as we learn how to develop it can be um it has nothing to do with external circumstances so what's your opinion megan fed as author of the joy approach about how to find this internal state inside ourselves even if we're like down on our hands and knees scrubbing the floor totally and i love that because you're so Right. Joy is very much to me like gratitude. Like if we can find it within ourselves, then we can experience it outside of ourselves. And I, one of my favorite concepts or one of my favorite thoughts is everything that we experience in our external world is a projection of our internal experience. So when we have that opportunity to acknowledge that, then we a feel like we have a little bit more control because we're not looking at the external experience and trying to shift and change the internal. And then it's allowing ourselves to tap back into those, I call them mini moments, because we need to tap into those mini moments of, okay, for example, you're down on your knees, you're scrubbing your floor. And right away, often it's like, oh, why do I have to do this? I wish I could be doing something else. And instead, it's slow down. That is, slowing down is the biggest piece of transformation, I believe. For anything we cannot create change if we don't slow down so pause and acknowledge why are you doing what you're doing what is it going to create for you what opportunity is it going to open up for you so maybe it is feeling like you have a clean home being more excited about being in the space that you're in so allowing yourselves to view the situation not from what you have to do versus what you are creating. Okay, now for our audience, if, if you and I were gonna de describe what joy feels like, okay, because I think sometimes when people are trapped in depression or anxiety, and, the, and frequently the experience of depression and anxiety is a feeling of trapped, like they're stuck in this really negative place they don't think they can get out of it. And I think that's why even some people turn to suicide for, you know, because they're trying to shift out of this horrible place. So for our audience, what is, what does joy feel like? Joy is a feeling of lightness or space. That is the way I want to describe it. And so it's not necessarily I think oftentimes we think of joy as that like jumping up and down and that like little kid who seems so joyous playing at the park. But as we grow older and as we mature, joy is simply just having the space of being able to breathe, to experience life from a new perspective, a new angle, and to feel like we are centered in ourselves. Like this, the term self-centered, I really want to shift the belief system on that idea of being self-centered because to me, that's a great thing to be. You want to be centered in yourself and have that feeling of being centered in yourself in order to move forward. Yeah, I, I appreciate what you're saying. And, and what's the difference in your mind between joy and happiness? Um, to me, happiness is more of a like fleeting experience. So it's, I would deem happiness as an emotion. 
and joy as a way of being. I love that. So joy, yeah. So joy is more of like that, that space, that feeling centered in yourself, feeling like you're moving purposely in your life. And when I say purposefully, like our purpose doesn't have to be this big, impactful thing like we often think purpose is. Purpose can simply be allowing ourselves to be present and connect with other individuals or other people. Or noticing that our breath is moving. That's purpose. Whereas happiness is that emotion of where we feel happiness in a moment and then we can release it. But joy is that constant, that centeredness. Right. So joy is a constant centeredness that we can find within ourselves. Yes, totally. Now, as the author of The Joy Approach, what do you see as the major blocks for people in experiencing joy on a regular basis? What people keep people out of their joy? One of the biggest things that, and the most simple things that keeps people out of their joy is being busy. We live in societies now that we have put a lot of expectations on ourselves or we have created a lot of self-comparison. And so because of that, we have become really busy and really active. And actually, this weekend, I was just talking to a student of mine who talked about like, well, if I'm not doing something, then I'm not being purposeful. And so instead, slowing down. So I often teach my students the power of meditation because meditation in itself is one of the most powerful practices that we can do, not necessarily just to tap into ourselves, but sometimes just to take away the external noise so that we can tap back into that feeling of space. Okay. You know, Megan Fittis, one of the things that I think keeps people out of their joy is um, acceptance of the negative. So, and it, this yes. goes back to our mind and our thoughts and beliefs. So one of the things that I like to do with my clients is to identify all the places where they've accepted a certain aspect of their life has to, has to be difficult. I always joke, the largest cult in the world is difficult. So for example, if, <laughs> if you think it's difficult to lose weight, or if it's difficult to be healthy, or if it's difficult to earn a living, or if it's difficult to be a parent, or if it's difficult to find your life partner. So it's like looking at all the ways that you see or you believe, you're holding the belief, that something has to be a struggle. What are, what are you say? What is your, are, you, are your thoughts on that? Yes, absolutely. It's so interesting to me. A lot of individuals don't want to experience the, the negative or the challenging because there is that belief system of if I have to work at it or if I feel challenged within it, then maybe it's not for me. Maybe I'm not good enough or maybe I'm not worthy of it. When the actuality is, is every single thing that we are given, every single challenge is an opportunity. And I love to work with my clients in terms of lean into those challenges. Lean into those things that you find difficult because that is where you're going to find the most light. So it's almost retraining the mind of being able to see the challenges or the difficulties. I love that you said that it's the most large cult out there is difficult. Um, it's finding those difficulties, lean into them, and then notice what's coming up. And it's from there that we can get the opportunity to learn, like, what are we telling ourselves? What is the narrative? that I'm utilizing in this moment to keep me into this space. And the beautiful thing about human beings is we have the opportunity constantly to rewrite our narrative. And so when we lean into those negative places and we re learn to rewrite the narrative on what that difficulty means, 
instead of seeing the challenge, how can we see the opportunity? How can we see the strengths that it's creating for us? How can we learn the tools that we're gaining from it and then move forward into that space? So, the, and that goes back to what you were talking about earlier, which is just really noticing what are the thoughts and beliefs that you're telling yourself? What's the story going on in your head? So, right? So totally. There, so, it's so true. So, for example, I could have a story, oh, it's so hard to, to clean my house. Oh, there's dust again. <laughs> Um, or I could say, you know, this is just a beautiful day and I feel wonderful and I'm really enjoying being here in this moment because it's really about drop. To me, joy is about dropping your story and experiencing as much as possible the now and what's happening in the moment. Right? Yes. And when we're in the moment and presence is so powerful but so because in the moment we can't experience anything but joy because we're centered there's nothing navigating our past there's nothing creating our future we just are yeah and I, and i think what you were talking about before about encouraging people to meditate that's one of the quickest avenues to find joy in your life even if you're going through a really difficult time, when, you're, when you take the moment to pause the story, even just momentarily, even just for five minutes, then you can find that place inside yourself. Uh, now, another way that I find is really helpful for people to find joy is to identify their top 10 values in life. So what do I mean by that? So everybody is different. So Megan Fettis is a wonderful person. I'm a wonderful person. You watching this, listening, you're a wonderful person. And yet what you value, what you hold most dear, what is important to you is going to be unique to you. So one of the things that I encourage all my clients to do is to make a list of a hundred things that you value in life. So for example, you could value financial freedom. You could value um, having um, a, a good school for your child. You could value being healthy. More than likely, if you're watching The Natural Healing Show, you value being healthy. So you make a list of all the things that you value in life. And I encourage people to start with a hundred because usually, the first 30 you can rattle off, but when you really stop and figure out what's really important to me, then you're gonna start to see some serious patterns. So for example, you could value you know, having time in your life to meditate or time in your life to exercise regularly. And once you get to the top 100, you're gonna be able to see the overall patterns. And then what you want to do is you want to narrow that down to your top 10. And my experience is that the only way to really experience joy on a regular basis is by living your, by your own values. And so oftentimes we're operating by societal programming or by, by what our families told us to do. And then there's this disconnect or lack of integration where we're not truly living by our own integrity. So when you live by your own values, then you're more likely to experience joy. What are your thoughts on that, Megan? Yes. And that's going back to that idea of being self-centered. So when we can really tap into exactly that. What are the highest values that you hold? What lights you up? What intention or impact do you want to bring to your daily conversations or to the daily interactions that you have with people? And really land in that space of the heart center versus the mind. Then it actually gives people the opportunity to, to move and navigate with joy. And that's, that slowing down is a huge piece. It's probably the first step in terms of being able to generate that. Slowing down, tap in, 
because our mind will make what is unimportant seem important and what is important seem unimportant. So that space where we can just tap into our body, reconnect the mind and the body, find our center, find our heart space, and then navigate from that space. That is definitely where joy again gets created. Now, Megan Fettis, you talked about getting into our heart as opposed to our mind. Why do you think it's so important to be in our heart rather than our mind to experience joy? Well, our heart is, and you know, I read this once when I was first studying yoga, and it's always resonated with me. And it was in the, a book called The Threads of Yoga. And they talked about how our heart is our thinker and our mind is our creator. And I love that concept because I think for so long we've been thinking of it as the opposite. We think, oh, if I think this with my mind and then bring it down into my heart, then I can create it. But often because we do have all of these external noises going on, we have societal expectations, we have interactions with other individuals, we have that aspect of our frontal lobe that creates a little bit more self-comparison or self-judgment. If we're always navigating from our mind, then we're more likely to be navigating for other people versus ourselves and be trying to fit ourselves into this box that nobody fits into because we're so unique. Whereas if we allow ourselves to listen to our heart, our heart will always guide us in the direction that we're meant to go. So another tool that I often teach my, my clients is if you're not certain about something, allow yourself to quiet down and just take a moment to ask your body, your heart, if this is the right direction for you. Because your body will never lie to you your mind is always thinking about how it can fit in. Now, you know, as I'm listening to you, Megan Fettas, I'm, I'm recalling a session that I had in the past week with a client of mine. And my client is a gay man, and he's starting to date another individual who has struggled with accepting his own sexuality which is what I, going back to what I was saying about you're really only going to experience joy and happiness in your life when you're, gonna, when you're living by your own values, right? So this, mm -hmm. uh, this other gentleman, he's been married to two different women, and yet he never found happiness within a traditional marriage with a woman, so he's now exploring this other aspect of himself. So how important do you think, Megan Fettas, it is that we rattle, radically accept all parts of ourselves in order to experience joy in our lives? Massively. Because we are. We are so unique. And there's going to be aspects of ourselves that not everybody is going to accept. But that doesn't matter. It's are you able to accept those parts of yourself? Are you able to love and appreciate what makes you who you are? And it's looking at the fact that as human beings, sometimes I think we forget that we are here for a greater purpose. Like I think sometimes we think we're just, oh, we're just living life. We wake up in the morning, we do our job, we eat, we sleep, and we do the next thing. But every single thing on this planet was created in a very purposeful way. Everything was created by a system. And every single human being, as their radically unique self, was put on this planet for a reason. And so I think sometimes we forget that if we're not accepting ourselves, we're actually creating a little bit of dysfunction in our system as a whole. So we're actually doing more favors when we radically accept ourselves and show up fully authentic and fully vulnerable in who we are so that we can truly support not just human nature, but all nature as a whole in this planet. And that goes back to what you were saying when I asked you what the definition of joy was, what you feel the definition of joy is. Because you talked about acceptance of all of our feelings. And one of the things that I talk to my clients about is 
um, the concept of pushing or pulling. So if I'm pushing you or I'm pulling you, I'm creating resistance. <laughs> On the other hand, if I'm just being, if I'm just being myself and I'm just being in my center that Megan Fettis is talking about, there is no resistance. And so what I find is that the more that we can be in our own center and the less resistance there is about anything, whether it's, it's now time to go scrub the floor or, you know, someone doesn't agree with me. So again, going back to what you were saying about your definition of joy, how does the concept uh, and the practice of non-resistance help us to achieve this joy within ourselves? It is a massive experience that we need to create. And so I utilize um, a, a concept that is just three steps. And it is accept what is. So allow yourself in this moment to accept whatever it is that you're experiencing. Because the moment that we start fighting it or the moment, moment we start pushing or pulling like you talk about, Catherine, that moment we create that resistance, then we've bound ourselves into that experience. Instead, if we can just accept it, and then if we can I love the experience that we're in. So we want to accept what is, love the experience fully, release it, and then choose what's next. And it's that step-by-step -step process that we then dissolve that resistance because now we're not fighting it, we're not doing that push or pull, we're loving it and we're acknowledging it. We're releasing it and then we're moving forward. Yeah. And, you know, going back to what I was experiencing before we talked about, I'm, so I'm down on my hands and knees. I'm scrubbing my steps. And just by going deeper into that moment, it's like, I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to stop doing it. I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, when, how soon will this be over? just really going deep into that experience, it's, it's, that's when you find that, right? And what about this mm -hmm. third step that you're talking about, about what's next? Tell us more about what's next. Yeah, so once we create that presence, I'll call it, in the moment, so we've accepted it, we've created love, we've released it, now there's a presence and now there's an opportunity for us to tap into our higher mind or our higher self to acknowledge what steps can I take now to move myself forward. Because when we tap into the thinking process prior to that acceptance, when we're in that resistance, now all of the thinking processes are that push or that pull, that resistance creating. But once we've unwound that resistance, then we can actually tap into that higher consciousness within our mind and actually see what is going to support me in this moment versus how can I change this moment? Right. Okay. That's wonderful, wonderful advice for our audience. Another thing that I like for people to do to experience more happiness and joy in their lives is to figure out uniquely for you, the top five things that you need in your life, okay? So we talked about how your values are gonna be unique to you. So for example, one person may really value, you know, being able to play soccer with their son on a Sunday afternoon. And somebody else may really value, um, again, being able to travel the world. So one of the things that I like to talk about is, again, your top five. And one of the things that is true about ourselves as human beings, we're always in a process of evolution. So for example, when you're a teenager, what you need to be happier and to experience joy may be one thing. And in your 30s, it may be something else. In your 50s, 60s, 70s, it's something else. So Megan Fedez, how do you go about find, helping and empowering people to find the activities and states of being? Because like we talked about, joy is an internal experience, but at the same time, 
there can be activities that we can do that help us get into that state more often. How do you help people figure that out? Yeah, so I call it like the, the passion and joy roadmap. And so the process is, first of all, look into areas that you find the most challenge. Because often we're given opportunities of challenge to strengthen us and teach us different things about ourselves that we weren't awakened to prior to. So lean into those areas. Once they've been able to create a list of things that they've found challenged and the lessons that they've learned or the opportunities that they've gained from those challenges, then we go into their values. What values do you have? What do you need in your life in order to feel purposeful or impactful? And then we go into what continues to show up in your life. What excites you in your life? And through this process of tapping into the challenges, into their values, into what continues to show up and what continues to light them up, then it starts to create, again, a pattern of, of different activities that sh might be showing up, different things that they do or different things that they can do that really excite them, that really tap into their heart center that's not about anybody else's expectations or any things that they can do for anybody else, but what can they do for themselves? That's great advice. Now let's talk about, you know, our, some of the people in our audience may be experiencing depression or anxiety or simply going through a very challenging period of, of their life. And um, I, 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 there's a saying that, most people by the age of 30 have had enough bad things happen to them that they could be depressed, you know, they could have depression. And by the age of 50, we've had enough, you know, hard challenges that we could be permanently depressed the rest of our lives. So, you know, accepting all our feelings and yet accepting challenges in our life, if somebody's in, this state of depression or anxiety, how can they begin to use some of these tools to shift out of their depression and anxiety? Mm -hmm. And I love that because usually when we're in that depression and anxiety, we're caught up in the thoughts of our mind, right? And so in those moments, it's more so the focus on tapping into the connection of our mind and our body. When we can get into the present moment, and so it's simple tools that I utilize. One is our breath. I mean, what a miracle that we have this breath that is coursing through our body and yet is the simplest thing that we can acknowledge. So sometimes when I'm working with clients specifically with depression or anxiety or even PTSD is another one, um, it's bring yourself into your breath. Notice your breath. And then we teach people how to unplug from their thoughts. So oftentimes what happens is we begin to have a thought and instead of just allowing it to be a thought and letting it leave our mind, we engage into it. And then we allow the story of that thought to wrap into our experience and into our feelings and our emotions, and then it creates that circle of depression or anxiety. So I teach individuals how to just basically see their thoughts as, as just thoughts, so things that are floating in, and allow them with their breath to flow them out. And so it's a simple practice of just sitting, just being, right? Because we want to unwind that resistance that's coming up or that push or pull allow them to be in their experience while they're breathing, see their thoughts and imagine themselves breathing in their thoughts and then breathing their thoughts out of themselves. I really love that you talked about the breath, Megan Fettas, um, because uh, like you, I'm, I'm a yoga teacher. I've taught yoga for 24 years. And, um, you know, one of the simple ways that you can tell whether or not you're stressed, because this show is about how to experience more joy in your life. 
if you're breathing from your chest, if you're doing thoracic breathing, you're stuck in the sympathetic side of your nervous system where you're stuck in the stress. On the other hand, if you're breathing into your belly, you're doing diaphragmatic breathing. And when you breathe into your belly, you're going to get 200 to 300% more oxygen. And that signals your nervous system to go into a relaxed state you, to access the parasympathetic nervous system. So again, if I'm like you trying to teach someone how to get into their joy by simply breathing into your belly, you're going to get 200 to 300% more oxygen you're going to signal your nervous system that you're now safe, that your stress is set aside for a moment, and you can begin to experience some of that joy, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, because we forget that we're a holistic unit, right? Like, yes, our thoughts come up, but one of the reasons that we get entangled into our thoughts is because that just that, we're activating our nervous system. And if we break it down into like the very basics of humanity, we were developed in this time when we had true like fear-based stressors, like when there was actual predators that we had to run from or move from. But now that we have shifted in our lifestyle, now that we don't have as much of that, we still have that activated within our beings but we have forgotten how to shut it off. And that breath is like an on off switch of stress. Yeah. Right. It's like, as soon as we can tap into that, we can connect to our bodies into the present moment. Yeah. And all you've got to do is breathe into your belly. So how do you do that? Simple way, lie on your stomach, feel your belly press against the floor, put a book on your abdomen, put your hands on your abdomen, and how quickly you can shift into that relaxed state is really a matter of training for people who practice yoga regularly, mm -hmm. like Megan and I, probably could be a matter of seconds or other people, it may take you a couple of minutes. And then another thing that I like to my clients to do is literally actually rewrite your story. So I'll tell people, okay, you know, you've gone through a difficult challenge, take a moment and write down the story of what happened to you and write it as positively as, I, as you can. And then once you've written the story and it's got to be true, there's no falsity in what you're writing, then take the story line by line and examine it. Again, you're using your mind and examine it and ask how you can shift the story that you're telling yourself to an, a, 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 a place where you're telling yourself the same exact story, but it's not pulling up the same negative emotions. So for example, let's say you just are going through the process of a divorce, or you lost a loved one, or any of the other truly challenging experiences that we can go through as human beings. They, what you wanna do is, find the lesson, find the blessing, find where you're being led to something even greater and find the gratitude, right? And the more you can rewrite your story so that it only pulls up positive emotions, you can change your brain chemistry by literally rewriting your story. But as long as you keep telling yourself a story from the point of view of poor me, or uh, from the victim point of view, view then you're gonna continue to create negative neurotransmitters and continue to feel heavy, anxious, and depressed. How, Megan Fettis, how do you get people to rewrite their story? I utilize a tool called fact versus story. And so it's similar in a lot of ways to what you do with your clients, Catherine. And I get my students or my clients to write out their story in their best way of like remembering it or being able to acknowledge it. And then we talk about unwinding the perceptual re like relay basically in our mind. And so in doing that, we acknowledge what, what was the fact of what happened. Let's look at what happened. 
and everything else we cross out. And it's not to disconnect from the story that they've written about the situation, but sometimes we get so plugged into our story that we forget about what actually happened. And so we cross out all of that stuff and then we write just the facts of what happened. And so what I consider facts are things that if there were multiple people in a room, there would be no ability to say something different happened. Those are facts. So it's like, I'll use a car accident, for example. Say a car accident happened. The fact would be two cars collided. That's what happened, right? And so in this process, it helps the individual understand, A, how they wrote their story and what that created for them in that moment. Because we write it that way for a reason. We, we do it as a protection mechanism or a coping mechanism or a way to feed something within ourselves. So that way they can see why did they write that? How did that show up for them? What did that create? And then exactly that. How can you rewrite utilizing just these facts, something that is supportive to you, something that allows you to grow and tap into yourself, your self-centered and your joy. Megan Fettis, author of The Joy Approach. Any final thoughts for our audience? Um, the biggest one would be to allow ourselves, my biggest thought would be get into the practice of meditation. Even if it's three minutes a day. Just create that space, shut off from all of the external noise and allow yourself to tap into yourself and your heart because the moment that you begin to give yourself that permission to connect to yourself to be vulnerable with yourself then you have the opportunity to share the magic that is you thank you so much megan fettis you've been listening to the natural healing show for uk health radio this is katherine kerrigan medical intuitive healer and amazon number one best-selling author you can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. You can find out more about Megan Fettis at meganfettis.com. And remember, when you give yourself permission to experience more joy in your life, you raise your vibration naturally and shift out of disease and illness. Thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.